Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. We have a very, 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 very special person with us. One of the former leads of the chicken operation who now works doing the social media on the farm, Miss Hannah. She's right over here. Hi, everybody. All right, so today's subject is chickens. Miss Hannah is going to teach us about chickens, and she's got some of our recent additions. <laughs> Whoa, look at this. Here, let me turn this around. So... Yeah, we got some of our baby chicks here. These guys are like two-ish weeks old. They will eventually lay eggs, but right now they're just hanging out. Yeah, let's just go back to the first one there. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna learn some interesting things about chickens. We're gonna learn about their role in our ecosystem. And then after Hannah talks a little bit about these chicks, we're gonna go over and meet Butterball, who is a hen that is one of our favorites. And you're gonna learn why her name is Butterball. Really excited. And then at the end, we're gonna have our quiz and we're gonna also reveal some of last week's extra credit submissions, right? Some photos or some pictures drawn with Emma and her habitat. And then we're gonna announce a new extra credit for this week. Um, yeah. Now we're going to learn a little bit about Miss Hannah. <laughs> all right, Hannah, it's all you. All right, so tell us, actually, let's, let's tell everybody, like, how you, how you came to find yourself here at Apricot Lane Farms and what your role was for a number of years. Okay, um, wow, okay. Uh, <laughs> so I came here as a woof volunteer for, uh, from Ohio. I had never, like, farmed before. I just wanted to learn about... The interconnectedness of everything i found it on the woof website shout out to woof um came intending to volunteer for three months i fell in love with the chickens and just the role they play here on the farm and what i really liked about them was just how you can really see all the love and the care that you put into them because we do take i used to say like i take better care of the chickens than I take care of myself but <laughs> um what do you love about chickens though can you can you give us any things that really made you fall in love with them? Yeah, so the fact that you can see the care through their that you put into them through their eggs and then that they have really interesting personalities, which I feel like is something that people don't think about when you immediately think of a chicken. And they're actually pretty smart. They're smart in their own way. <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel like they get kind of a rap for being dumb, but they're pretty smart birds, right? What, you know, I, this is, I'm going to throw a, like a question that we haven't talked about here at you, but like how many faces, I, I, I read this fact once, tell me if you think this is true, but how many different faces can a chicken recognize? Faces? Yeah, I read something, do you know that number? I don't know the number, but I do know that chickens can have both like positive and negative memories, so they can remember if something is bad or something is good, so I feel like they can probably remember if they like people or not yes they remember the good ones and the bad ones yeah the ones that come in they're nice and so when you're working around chickens what's really important about like the speed with which you walk around and work around chickens uh yeah you do so chickens kind of have this great frantic energy so you have to meet them with a nice calm very slow moving um presence when they're little we actually to get them used to people because it's different with the like mobile coops it's kind of difficult if they're really scared of people so we'll go in when they're like a little bigger than this and just cover like our hands and arms in grass and have them like eat the grass off of us so they like associate their caretakers uh with fun treats fun treats <laughs> Now, actually, while, we're, while we have you here, let's talk about the role of the chickens on this farm and our sort of self-contained ecosystem. Does anyone know what role the chickens have uh, on Apricot Lane Farms? Because they're helping to solve problems, right? And also adding to fertility. So if you remember from the Biggest Little Farm movie, we have a lot of this on the farm. Does anyone know what that is? Yeah, right, that is poop. And those are flies laying their maggots in the poop. And those flies become a really big problem for us, right? But there's something that helps to eat the maggots before they become flies. And that is where 
the role of the chicken comes into play. So one of the things that the chickens on the farm do is help to regulate the fly population that comes from having a lot of cow poop and sheep poop. And they love that stuff. And at the same time that they're eating those maggots, they're also scratching through that manure and spreading it out. And that manure is a fertilizer for the pastures. And then of course the chicken poop is also a fertilizer and it's really, really high in nitrogen. And that's really good for our crops and our pastures and any plant. They love nitrogen and, you know, back guano and chicken poop, uh, even duck poop, very high in nitrogen. So we get a lot of benefit from having these birds here on the farm. So if chickens like to eat things like maggots and bugs and grubs and grass and things like that, so they're eating, you know, vegetables and living things, that diet is similar to the pigs. And does anybody remember what kind of diet pigs have? If sheep and cows are herbivores, chickens and pigs that eat plants and animal matter are considered right. Some of you got it. Omnivores. Omnivores, which means that they eat both plant and animal matter to survive. I mean, a chicken would eat a dead gopher. If we fed them a dead gopher, which we don't, but we'd love to, but we don't, uh, they, would eat, they would eat dead gophers. They would eat, uh, they would eat anything that, that will let them catch, catch them. Yeah, and so at home, if you're like starting, like if you're collecting compost and you have chickens, I'm sure some of you probably have chickens at home and you probably feed them some of your table scraps. And that makes for the best what, Hannah? Eggs. That's right. That's where the <laughs> eggs really sort of become the thing. Let me see. Um, we also have all those oh yeah, let's look at all the other. So she's got a whole bunch. Now, who, what what is what are their jobs going to be? Are these going to be layers? Or are they going to be the roasters? So these are the layers. They will lay. They'll be in our laying coop. This little guy with the fluffy head is destined to the, one of the sweetest spots on the farm that we'll see later. The garden coop, where they help uh, control, pe mitigate pests in the garden. So he's gonna have a pretty sweet gig when he grows up. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how to determine if a chicken egg is coming from a chicken that's being raised in a healthy way. All right, so there's um, there's a way to do this. One is, well, can you, do you know, Hannah? How? So what are some of the things that would tell you if a chicken egg is coming from a healthy chicken? Yeah, so the, mo the easiest way is through the yolk. So it'll have that bright orange golden color, uh, but that's not the only way because John, you've mentioned there are ways that you can get around that orange yolk. Oh yeah, so you can also, f you, know, you, you can cheat and feed them certain things that change the yolk color, but an orange, a more orange yolk does mean that they have access to a diverse diet, right? And so look, here's an egg, right? And there's a couple of things that make this a healthy looking egg. One is the plump, the plumpness of that yolk. You see how it's kind of firm and sort of standing up and it's orange. So that means that it has a diversity of diet, but then look, there's two layers of white and that's called the albumen, right? There's two layers. You should see two layers. If you see just one layer and it just spreads across the pan, that typically is more uh, an indication of a, of a chicken that maybe doesn't have a diverse diet of all the minerals it needs to make for a healthy, healthy yolk. And there's a, the other one indicator would be a really hard shell. And I was gonna have Hannah take an egg and crack it against her head to see if it was hard enough, but we won't do that to I you today. I have my hands full. Yeah, she, her hands yeah. are full. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know, actually, you know what? This reminds me of talking about all the egg stuff. Reminds me of, so has anybody ever at home eaten, eaten an egg or, or say had a hard boiled egg and there's two yolks in it? They had twin, egg, there's twins in the egg, right? Well, something crazy happened here a couple of years ago on Apricot Lane Farms. We cracked into a huge egg and beyond just being twins, there was something else incredible inside this egg. And I have the footage here. So we look at the size of that egg. So that's Tina, who used to run the chicken operation. She cracks it open and look, a yolk and another egg. How insane is that? Everyone was very, very excited. I have not ever seen that again, but look how big that egg is. And that is all real, none of that is fake. 
She carried that around in her cart all day long and she said, hey, I've been, I've been wanting to crack this open. Do you, wanna, do you wanna see what's inside it? I'm like, oh my gosh. And I pulled my phone out and I'm so glad I did because no one ever would have ever believed that. Yeah. No? All right, so the other thing that we're gonna talk about now is sort of breed and egg color and how that happens. Because I'm sure you get that question a lot, Hannah. Right, and one we got a question from uh, Megan and Maddie from Grass Valley, California, and some other folks who asked, you know, are there differences in taste and nutritional value in the different types of chickens and different type of chicken eggs, but also like, does the color and the shell matter? Like, is there a taste difference? Uh, so no, the color of the shell does not matter uh, as far as the health of the egg. So a white egg is just as healthy as a brown egg. Uh, there are plenty of chickens that naturally uh, lay white eggs. And uh, yeah, so what co determines the color of the egg is the breed. So all of these guys are kind of different breeds. So they'll probably, they'll all lay different colored eggs. And we actually have a box of eggs here that maybe uh, here. We'll set it down here. Maybe uh, I know it can help me open this up. This is this is a box of our eggs, and look at all the different colors. So look at all those different colors. Do you want to talk about some of the colors there and tell us like where did this one come from? Look at this spotted egg. Where did that come from? Yeah. So these spotted eggs are really cool. I call them freggles because that's like freckled eggs. Oh, a freggle. <laughs> so you made that term up. So that is a. Maybe we'll make that one of the quiz questions. Um, what is a spotted egg called, according to Hannah, <laughs> a freggle? So the way that this happens is pretty cool. So a chicken forms the egg inside of it layer by layer. So it starts out with a yolk, and then as it moves through the chicken's body, each layer is added on. And the final layer, layer uh, which is called the bloom, is kind of sprayed like spray paint. So this is from some a chicken that has kind of an uneven spray uh, spray can in it. So it sprays it hard in some spots and not hard in others. So that's how that happens. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. So there's some people when they buy our egg boxes, or actually we've heard that they go into the store and they will take all the blue eggs and green eggs and put them into one box because they think that the blue eggs and the green eggs taste better. True or false? False. False. They do not, the, the, the taste is no different unless that blue egg chicken just happens to be on a diet that's different than the rest of them, right? So how many different breeds do we have on Apricot Lane Farms? We have 14 different breeds, which is a lot. Um, and yeah, that's how we get all these beautiful different eggs because different breeds of chickens, like we have multiple breeds that will lay these like beautiful green and blue eggs. Uh, they're called Easter Eggers. So let's see, these are the Easter Egger ones, lay the like the blue and green eggs. Those are really popular. And these are the ones that people try to put all in one box and take out of the store. And that's what this little yeah. chicken will look So that's an actual, that's an Easter Egger right there. They have like the little eyeliner, if you can see. I know it's really blurry, but. Um, they kind of look like Chris Angel with yeah. the lie liner. <laughs> it's, well, that's what we'll name her, Chris Angel. And so what are some of the other characteristics of the breeds that we have? So when we're, what are we looking for, I guess, in the characteristics of different breeds? So what we're looking for, I would say, are these, uh, these little barred rock ones. The black ones are, have really great characteristics as a breed. They're really good moms. They're not flighty, which kind of means they're uh, flighty is when a bird is a, kind of a scaredy cat and it jumps out of the fence really easily it, it moves very quickly they generally have like lighter bodies uh and the other breed character good moms good layers uh and flighty yeah. oh and yeah. productivity how many eggs they lay so every chicken doesn't lay the same quantity of eggs some uh are harder workers than others and so just to clarify, um, the, the, the taste of an egg is, is really coming from what the chicken is being fed. And in our case, our chickens are on pastures and grass, right? They're out there eating bugs and worms. And that diversity of diet is infusing that egg with minerals. And minerals are essentially salts, right? And that is creating a flavor profile that is really um, what people on when they eat our eggs describe as like a buttery, almost sort of fattier taste. And what they're really tasting is the mineralization coming from the habitat that the chickens are eating from. Um, so now we're gonna talk about the difference between a rooster and a hen. Does anyone know which one is the boy and which one is the girl? 
So if you said boy is a rooster, then you were correct. And so here's some of the different characteristics of a rooster. So obviously they're bigger. Well, typically they're bigger in size, right? They have bigger tail feathers. They have those big combs right on top of their head. And they have spurs on their feet, which I don't think we have any footage of, but they have these spurs on their, on their backsides of, of their feet that actually they use to attack things that may be trying to hurt them or hurt one of their hens. And they're always little looking around for trouble. And they'll warn the hens if they see like a predator, like a, you know, like a big um, hawk come in or, or a dog. And oftentimes, let's say like, actually we had a bobcat come in and jump into our uh, pasture one day and it killed the rooster because the rooster went and tried to fight the bobcat. And usually that's the first thing that ends up getting hurt is the rooster because he's always trying to sort of defend, defend his ladies. And chicken farmers usually don't have the roosters and the hens together because the roosters don't do what? <laughs> they don't pay the rent. They don't lay the eggs. So That's... if you think about it as a chicken farmer, if they're not laying eggs and you don't really think about the like social dynamics of the chickens, uh, you're like, why would I have roosters? Because chickens will, hens will lay eggs without roosters, which is a question that I also get a lot that they will lay them without roosters, but they're happier if they, if they got a, a rooster in their life. And then roosters do this really cool thing and I'm going to show a clip of it. It's hard to see. It's, we don't have really good footage of it. This is actually Greasy who was actually sort of courting and trying to develop a relationship with a hen that jumped into his area one day and they do this little this little dance. All right. So let's see Greasy do this little dance. He's doing this little dance. He's ruffling his feathers. He's stomping his feet around and that, that's all a part of a ritual to try to attract the attention of a hen. Uh, that, that hen's name is Gaga, and it's Greasy's dance. I don't know if you can imitate the dance at home, and I don't care how old you are, but I think you should stand up now. I think you should ruffle your feathers and stomp your feet really quick on the ground and practice your, your, your rooster dance. We should have Hannah do it. I'm covered in Oh, she can't do it right now. Um, oh. Oh, actually, I'm going to do the, all right, so I'm going to, I'm just, I'm not going to, you're, you're only going to see my feet, but this is what they do with their feet. I don't know if you can see that. But they do this at your feet. You gotta do that. That's the best part, is the, the feet thing. Um, let's see, where are we, what are we gonna do next? I think we're gonna head over and, should we should we head over to the, or do we have, we have another question here. Let's see, can I see that? From Elizabeth and Luca, um, they are asking, when do chickens start laying their eggs? So I'm gonna turn that back over to Hannah. Um, so when do chickens start laying their eggs? So these chicks are how old first? Let's say that. How old are these chicks? These guys are about two weeks old. I think a little more. Right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. how long before they can start laying eggs? So a chicken will lay its first egg around 18 to 20 weeks. So these guys still have about like three months to go. Um, and when they start laying eggs, they're really small and really pigmented, like the most beautiful eggs you've seen, uh, but then as they get older, they get more like normal sized and less vibrantly colored. Wow, so that's a long time that we have to wait, right, before these eggs start coming out. It is, yeah. Um, all right, so do we, and here's a question that we get a lot. Do we hatch our own eggs? We do not. We used to hatch our own eggs, but it is really, it's, hard and a lot of work and it would be a whole nother operation. So now we actually get them in, a in the mail, which is really common to ship chicks. Yeah, actually, I think we have some, so we have some footage here of, this is, this actually happened on the farm recently. All right, this was a hen named uh, Nugget who literally had babies inside, uh, or had laid eggs, sorry, <laughs> inside of a trash can full of chicken feed. And we let her go the, the whole sort of 21 days. And then, um, so when we're not hatching them like that, where a rogue chicken sort of gets flighty and runs away and has a nest of her own, we get them literally through the mail. So this is what they look like. They come in these boxes. And it's really funny when we go to the post office and we have to knock on like the back door, you can hear the chicks inside the post office and the people bringing them out and looking at us like we're crazy. But that's how a lot of, um, of the baby chicks are delivered around the country are in these little boxes. And they're only like probably three days old at that point. And they've never been fed. That's, that's like they have just enough sort of nutrient left from, from, uh, from hatching that they can survive without being fed for a few days. 
Um, so they generally do pretty well being being shipped in the U.S. Uh, by the by the Postal Service. All right. Um, all right. What else we got? How often do chickens lay eggs? How often do chicken? Oh, that is a good question. How often do chickens <laughs> lay eggs? Does anyone know the answer? So one chicken. How long does it take to lay one egg? What's the fastest it can do it? Let's see. We'll see. Who's the answer to that one? Um, so during its most productive time, a chicken will lay an egg every 25 hours, but that's not all the time. That's in like the summer when they're getting a lot of light because, uh, the amount of light a chicken that is in the day determines how productive a chicken is. And there's a reason for that. Why does, why is it that, uh, that, a, that the amount of light in the day determines how productive or when a chicken starts to lay eggs again? Um... So Am I throwing it, one at you because I know the answer. <laughs> it's I, rhetorical. I don't know. This is um, it's the gland in their brain that signals to r drop the yolk that needs uh, twelve hours of light. But there's a reason. So that they, I would say that the reason is so that they don't have chicks going into the winter, but more going into the warmer seasons. I don't know. That. Yeah. <laughs> right. So that way, that's sort of the evolutionary reason behind it. <laughs> Um, that way they aren't having chicks in the cold, cold, cold winter. Um, oh, and so here's something cool. So we're going to actually head out, you know, so if you think about a, a dozen eggs, I'm going to go over here. If you think about a dozen eggs that you purchase and it takes 25 hours for a chicken to produce one egg at a minimum. And if there was one chicken in your backyard producing that dozen eggs, that would take 12 over 12 days to make a dozen eggs. So. That's pretty insane when you think of how much work goes into creating a dozen eggs, right? All right, so we are going to head over. Uh, oh, we have some, are we, is it time for questions? We'll do that over there. Oh, we're gonna do it over here. All right, we're gonna head over and there's a coop that we like to uh, keep. We keep a small coop of chickens here in the garden. Oh, look, there's Molly. Hi, oh, guys. You wanna come up and say hi? Sure. While we're walking over and where's Bodie? Oh, hi. Thanks for waiting around to say hi. Yeah. Hi everybody, and I had a question for you, John. Are you going to teach people how to catch a chicken? Am I? No, I don't know if I'm going to do that today. <laughs> Maybe we'll try. John? You have to want to catch a chicken. That's the whole trick. You have to want to catch the chicken. Have you ever caught a chicken? No. No. All right, we're heading over to the garden. Do you want to come with us? You guys can stand on the outside oh, here. Sure. All right, so let's turn around. This is the. We call this the garden. These chickens are actually really lucky. They may not be on pastures. There's only a few of them. They may not be on a pasture, but they get all the veggie scraps from our garden. Look, there's our garden cat, Whiskers. Oh, Whiskers. Let's just say hi to Whiskers really quick because this is a rare sighting. Whiskers is one of the most fierce hunters on the farm. He can catch a rabbit his size and beyond. There's rumors that he's even carried a raccoon over his shoulder back to the barn. What do you say, Whiskers? Whiskers the wild hunter, and he also loves gophers. All right, back to the garden coop. And we have some questions that have come in. Sandra's going to give me. Oh, and then our, is that our special guest? Yeah. All right. Maybe we should inter, inter... Well, let's... You know what? Let's go with a question, and then we're going to introduce this special guest right here and why she's so special. Um, wait, wait till you see this. All right, so let's get our first question. Uh, why do we refrigerate eggs in the United States? Do you know the answer? I do, yeah. Um, so the reason you need to refrigerate eggs is because they are washed. Um, it's In the grocery stores, they're, they're washed in a way where they're fully submerged. So that washes off that layer I was talking about earlier, the bloom. So if you have a coop at home and you don't need to wash the eggs, you can even just like brush off if they have a little dirt or even a little poop on them. Yeah. Um, and then you don't need to refrigerate them if you don't wash them. Yeah, if you have your own coop or you're getting them from a farm that maybe doesn't wash that bloom off, then, you know, we here on the farm, Molly and I sometimes will leave the eggs on the counter for a couple of, you know, maybe a week or two at the most. But generally by putting them in the fridge, they do stay a lot, a lot fresher. And then uh, what hatchery do, you, do we use? We use a couple different, right? Or where are we, what are we using now? We use a couple of them, but our main hatchery is Murray McMurray. Um, yeah, they're great. They have, a lot of, uh, they have a lot of different breeds available that they can recommend for like, if you live in a cold climate or a warm climate, or you want uh, heavy producers and that kind of thing. And here's a question. How can you, how can you tell how old a chicken is? It's kind uh, of tough to be exact, I guess, right? 
Yeah, I mean, you can tell by their eggs. So it's their eggs? Of, yeah. So as a chicken gets older, so like when they're young and they start laying eggs and they're really pigmented and small, as they get older, <laughs> their eggs get a l larger. So you'll, if you have an old coop, your chickens will lay these big kind of like wonky eggs. So they'll start getting these like bands. So they're all like wonky and yeah, so you can tell by their eggs and uh, sometimes their feathers will lose their luster a little bit. All right, and then uh, what do you think, which which type of chicken is the best layer? What have we found? I mean, there's a species type. I mean, what, there's a couple, but. Um, so on our farm, I love the barred rocks as the best layer uh, for like a home coop. They are really nice and really productive uh, with the proper amount of lights. They'll give you uh, about five eggs a week. And what about the Rhode Island Reds. Oh, the Rhode Island Reds are good too. I yeah, I'm more partial to the Bard Rocks just because I like yeah. their personality. You like the personality. Well, that's important, <laughs> right? You know, the, sometimes productivity um, isn't all isn't the totality of the equation that what ma what makes a farm sustainable. You have to love the breeds that you work with. If it's all just about productivity and volume, you know, you still have to go through hard, tough days. So you have to love the species and the types of plants. <laughs> right and types of roosters he said that that you are working with and so do you know the name of the the company that we get our minerals from because minerals are a really big part of the supplementation part of the supplementation that we uh, feed our chickens so where do we get our minerals from um modesto milling is where we get them from yeah and our feed is special too we get it from modesto milling as well what's special about our feed so our feed is uh, non-soy, non-GMO. It's a supplemental feed. We guess that they eat about like 50% pasture, probably like 60 and then like 40% feed. Um, and an interesting thing that we learned was that chickens need more protein in the summer. So Modesto will actually work with us to give them a little higher protein content in the hotter months. Nice. And then um, this is a really important question that came in from some of the viewers. <laughs> what do chickens do for fun? Ooh. Especially during the coronavirus. What do chickens do for fun? Well, they definitely love to like peck and eat um, some bugs. Chickens will also re really like seeing themselves in like reflections and stuff. So they'll find those. Hang out in the shade. They'll actually, they're really good at that. I've seen chickens line up behind a single pole uh, to get the shade in a pasture, and that's really <laughs> funny. You gotta get a shot of that. That is Dust funny. Bathing? Dust bathing. Dust too. bathing. Yeah. Yeah. We, someone might be doing that around here, but they're like they, they dust bathe back here. Let's see if we can walk back here. This is where they're all hiding. They like to go back there and dust bathe, and that helps them with the mites, right? Yes. They're so shy. Why are you so shy today? We're moving very slow, as we should. Um, all right, and oh, and does Whiskers, <laughs> does Whiskers the great wild hunter, here, can you come over on this side? Oh, yeah. Does Whiskers the great, whoops, does Whiskers the great wild hunter, does he eat chickens? Does Whiskers eat chickens? Uh, no. Oh, he's dancing. Um, oh. Whiskers does not eat chickens. All right, and last question, what kind of chicken is Butterball? And that's a perfect segue to Butterball. And the reason we call her Butterball is because look at her shape. That is not typical of, look at that. Oh, sorry, Butterball, I scared you away. Butterball's enchanted by the rooster. <laughs> She's enchanted by the rooster who came and started dancing for her. Hey, Butterball. Again, if it's really blurry for you at home, it's because Instagram's having some troubles. Um, and you, we're gonna post this on YouTube later. Um, so you can go to our YouTube channel uh, youtube.com slash apricot lane farms and right now if you're just joining us this is butterball the chicken who is round like a little little ball of butter and she's one of the favorites here and she's got uh, just a great attitude and demeanor um, all right so this little coop has something in it we're gonna go take a look there's some eggs in here that these girls have just laid look at that isn't that nice and if you notice, we use, I put some straw in here just to make the eggs pop out. I actually did that for you guys, but generally we don't even use the straw anymore. We use these nest pads right here. And then that way they're removable and you can just, you know, when they get the poop on there, you can just 
pat them, uh, tap them on the ground and spray them off. And then you're not dealing with messy eggs. It keeps your eggs cleaner. And when you have clean eggs, that means you don't have to scrub that bloom off, right? Which is protecting the egg and keeping them really fresh. So we like to do everything we can to make sure that we're uh, providing an environment where the chickens lay a, lay a clean egg. Because they come, sometimes they don't really know the difference between the outside and the inside when it comes to where they poop. They'll just poop right in their nest box. All right. What do we have next? What type of chicken is Butterball? Oh, what type of chicken is Butterball? She is a speckled Sussex. I heard someone guess that, but yeah, she's a speckled Sussex. A speckled Sussex. You keep, I'm, I'm trying to find you and you keep hiding from me. <laughs> all right, I know. I'm trying to get it. And I'm all worried about the background being nice. Um, oh, they've all come out. So all the ladies are out. All right, we're now going to do our quiz while we're looking at these, at these hens. We're gonna do our quiz, so hopefully you've been listening. So I want you to try at home. So what is the chicken's role? Number one, what is the chicken's role on the farm here at Apricot Lane Farms? What is the chicken's role? All right, now if you said, oh, that's right, that was one. She, the, they said fly population, the chickens are helping you. And to fertilize the soil, and spread out that manure and to make really great tasty eggs for the farmers and the customers of us farmers, okay? What kind of diet do chickens have? Not herbivores, right, omnivores. Number three, what determines the color of the egg a chicken lays? What determines the color? If you said the breed, then you were correct. Different breeds lay different colored eggs. And what is the one way to tell if a chicken, well, here we go, there's Butterball over there hiding from us. What's one way to tell if, it, if a chicken is healthy? How do we determine whether a chicken's healthy? Well, first of all, obviously, if they look healthy, right? But, but something that they, they lay, right, an egg then egg can, can help us determine how healthy a chicken is, right? Their, their shells are hard, the yolks are, are, um, are nice and bright, or an orange, uh, typically it can be, and the, the white is very firm, and the, usually there's two layers of that white. What kind of chicken is this, Hannah? Uh, that is a silky. It's a silky. All right, and our last question, number five, what do roosters do? What do roosters do, at least in our ecosystem? They protect the flock. They do little dances to find mates. They show them where the food is. They show them where the, to where to dust bathe. All kinds of fun stuff like that. All right, so now we're gonna do something. Uh, we're gonna go over last week's extra credit. Let me turn this around. All right, we actually, I think we have some footage of some people that's turned in some extra credit because last week was to, um, was to draw the habitat for where pigs live, right? Emma specifically. So let me try to find this. So this came in, let's see who was our first one here. This is a video actually that got sent to us from Logan and Logan's in second grade from Hamden, Maine. All right, so here's his picture that he drew for us. Here is the pig. The pig is rooting for gloves. He's turning over the soil in his pasture in the field. And here's his wallow, here's the red bard, and here's the blue sky. Nice job, Beautiful nice job. Gloves. All right, and then we got some stills. This is from Claire, age seven. Excellent job. We're gonna go through a few of these. And this is Callie, age seven. Nice job, look at that sky. That is a beautiful blue California sky. And then, what, this is another one. Oh, Genevieve, age, is that? That's weird, it still has its name up there. Anyway, this is from Genevieve. Some okay. technical difficulties. Genevieve, age 11. That is beautiful. That must be Farmer Charlie that she drew in there. And then, what was that weird? There's still things. There's two. Oh, there's two, okay. So we got June, age two, and William, age four. Thank you guys so much for sending these in. All right, oh, the first one right here. Oh, the extra credit, yeah, yeah, okay. All right, so here's our extra credit for this week. Are you ready for this? And we love when you send these to us. You can send them through with an Instagram messenger, right? I am. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, Messenger, um, you can email. So yeah, you can that. email them to us at info at Apricot Lane Farms or just DM them to us on Instagram. We got so many good ones last week. I can't wait to see the ones for this week. Yeah, that was really great. All right, so here's the next one. This ex week's extra credit is to draw a hen and a rooster surrounded by their favorite food. And it can be abstract. You can put the hen and the rooster in the center and you can draw just like a circle of all the different things that you think a hen and a rooster would like to eat. And then just go ahead and send them in to us. Um, yeah, we really enjoyed seeing those last week. It's been really nice to have Hannah back out here. But tell them what you're doing now, Hannah, while we're waiting for some questions. Uh, so right now I'm helping manage the social media on the farm and mm -hmm. the website and just the communications thing. So answering your guys' questions on Instagram, uh, planning the content with the help of others on the farm and all that good stuff. Oh, what are we going to do next Friday? We don't know. What do you guys think we should do next Friday? Why don't you start sending in some, some, uh, some suggestions? That was one of the questions. How many chickens do you have on the farm? How many chickens do we have on the farm is a question. Um, we have, it usually hovers around a thousand between uh, layers. A thousand. And, can you imagine? Uh, roasters. And there, can you imagine having a thousand chickens in your backyard? I wish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's not lying. She's not lying. Let's see. We would love to see your worm operation. That keeps mm. coming up. We're going to have to do that. Owls. That's another good suggestion. Birds on the farm. Oh, we have a really special one. We have Trevor's going to do one about hawks and birds for us on the farm. That's a really special one coming up. Um, let's see. Cats and dogs oh, on the farm. Yeah, yeah the definitely. Farm. With the uh, guardian dogs. That's one that we're really looking forward. And horses. And we have one horse on the farm, his name's Rico, and he has a trick, which we should try to see if maybe he could do live. He can let himself out of his stop, uh, his stop pretty crazy with his mouth. And he can untie three or four different types of knots. Um, he, um, he was Houdini in a former, former life. I think that's time. That means it's time to go. That's one, one crow or whatever. Uh, time, time to go. Thanks for uh, letting us sort of spend some time with you in your living room. Uh, share this. Tell tell your friends that we do this every Friday at 10 o'clock. Um, and then on yeah, your teachers and stuff like that. We'd love to have more of the more teachers involved uh, with their classes. And you know, Molly does the Thursdays in the kitchen at 10 o'clock. Um, we we're live streaming on Instagram, obviously. Is um, but yeah, thanks for joining us, guys. Take care. Bye. Bye bye.